In this video, I will provide an example on how to do quantile regression. Before you view this video, please go ahead and watch my other video entitled Quantile Regression to learn more about the models and how uh, things are set up in quantile regression. So this is the problem that we're going to consider. We would like to know the effects of different factors that um, affect total medical expenditures and instead of just looking at averages we want to know what these effects are for people that have low medium and high expenditures so we want to look along the distribution or the quantiles of the dependent variables in this case total medical expenditures the data comes from the medical expenditure panel survey dependent variable would be total medical expenditures and independent variables would be whether or not a person has supplemental insurance, the total number of chronic conditions, age, female, and white. And we will estimate an OLS regression, quantile regressions at the 25th, 50th, and 75th quantile. Before we begin, let's look at the quantile of the dependent variable. And for, for us, this is total medical expenditures. And these are the values for the dependent variable. They vary between zero and I think that's uh, $150,000 that somebody spent uh, in a year on total medical expenditures. And on this axis, we have the quantiles. And we're basically sorting the data from the minimum to the maximum, and we're seeing what, what their values are. So you can think about this as percentiles. So the median here is about ooh, a few thousand dollars. And we have very, very low expenditures in the lower quantiles. And here the expenditures are rapidly increasing as we're getting toward 90th percentile. Uh, we have expenditures of $50,000 and above. So notice that when we talk about different quantiles, we talk about different quantiles of the dependent variable, not the independent variables. So when we talk about for people with low expenditures, we're talking about this. And people with high expenditures, we're talking of for these people that have very high values here. So then on this slide, this is a lot of information here. But I have estimated an OLS regression as well as quantile regressions for the 25th, 50th, and 75th uh, qu quantiles. And you can estimate these regressions at any quantile that you want. You can do it every 10th quantile, like 10, 20, 30, 40, and so on. Or you can do them for very low values, like the 5th and the 95th, depending on what's interesting for you in your study. So um, here is the typical OLS regression that we have. And we would, ask, we would interpret the coefficients in, in a very familiar way to you. If somebody has supplementary private insurance, they will spend $585 more in total medical expenditures. So there's no qualifications as to which quantile it refers to because this is on average and, and so on. Or you can look at this coefficient. If someone has one additional number of chronic problems, they would have $2,528 more dollars into total medical expenditures. Now, when we talk about quantile regression, the way to interpret this one is we can say individuals who have one more chronic problem will spend 782 more dollars right here in total medical expenditures for those that have low total expenditures at the 25% uh, percent quantile, and they would spend up to 2855 more dollars in total medical expenditures for those that have high expenditures or the 75th percent quantile. So in other words, if we look across these quantiles, look at how the effect is becoming stronger over the quantiles. So the number of chronic problems has even a bigger and higher effect for those people that, that have high expenditures. Okay. So that doesn't necessarily have to be the case. You know, the relationship here could be same or it could be increasing, decreasing or non-monotonic. Uh, any, anything goes. The one thing to also notice in this table is that there are two types of significant coefficients. 
those that are significantly different than zero and I've denoted them, them with the star and they're exactly the same as you, you could think of significantly different coefficient from zero. It means that if you draw a quanta, if you draw a confidence interval around that coefficient, zero will not be in there. That's what, what that one means and it's very standard. But now what's very important to talk about when you have quanta regression is, is it significant from the OLS regression? coefficients because if it's not then there's no point of using quanta regression we want to see significant differences and you need to have a different mark in this case I have this plus or cross sign here that denotes significant difference in the OLS so how do I know that so I'm looking at this number and then I'm looking at the confidence interval coming from the statistical software if there's no confidence interval then just put the coefficient plus or minus 1.90 six times the standard error and you're going to get the confidence interval and you can see that if this OLS coefficient is in that confidence interval or not if it's outside then we have significant difference from those coefficients and if it's not then they're not significantly different so notice one thing so for this very low quantiles we have significant difference like this number is significantly different than that and this number is significantly different than the OLS. But for the very high level, well, look at how, I mean, even the magnitudes are very similar, so it's not significantly different. So notice this, and we will see that also when we are doing the graphs in here. So that's a very important thing to not forget when you do a quanti regression for your paper to denote significant difference from the OLS regression. And you may also want to test for significant difference between the quantile coefficients. So, for example, you want to test if those coefficients are different than those. Or is this number 782 is it different from this number? And then you can say, oh, there's a significant difference across quantiles. Uh, and there are programs to, to do that and test that. The final thing I want to talk about here is that uh, and this is on the next slide, I've already covered a couple of the points uh, up to here, but you may also want to conduct a heteroskedasticity test to justify the use of quantile regression, and I will show you how you can do that uh, with the Bruce Pagan test statistic uh, actually shows that it's significantly different than zero, and therefore we have heteroskedasticity and we're justified in the use of quantile regression. Okay, so this is now the most interesting thing about quantile regression coefficients, and I got these graphs from the software R. On the next page, I have the stata ones, which are basically the same thing. So when you, when you have a paper or a presentation, make sure that you include these because they're great visually and um, for people to, uh, to see what, uh, what are those differential effects. And I have summarized those results on the very last slide, uh, so you can view those uh, later. Okay, so let's look at this one. This is the most interesting variable here. This is the total number of chronic conditions, and these are the coefficients of how it affects the dependent variable of total expenditures. Okay, so this line here that we have the horizontal line, that's the OLS regression coefficients. And notice that it doesn't vary across quantiles. Why? Because we just have one set of or less of regression coefficients. They don't vary across the quantiles. And the dashed line here are the confidence interval around the OLS line. So notice how it's nice and tight here for the OLS regression co uh, coefficients. These things here are the quantile coefficients themselves as well as the confidence interval around it. And notice how the confidence interval is small, here is large, that doesn't have to be the case. But notice that it differs, and it's different shape and form here, or here, or here. It could be anything. So in this case, um, what we want to do is compare the confidence intervals for the OLS and the quantile. And the more we have a situation like that, where these are far out of, of the OLS uh, confidence intervals, then we have significantly different results, and that's a very good finding. Because notice here, I mean, these, these coefficients here are 
completely inside the confidence interval for OLS and they don't move much outside. So there's no not much point of using um, quanta regression if we have cases like that. But these are the really interesting cases here. Or a case where maybe just has an effect on the high quantiles like we have here, but no different effect on the low quantiles. So now also notice that uh, we would say that these uh, these coefficients here, so notice that if we have quantiles of 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, they're significantly lower than the OLS one. And when we have the higher ones above 0 0.8 and so on, we would have that they're significantly higher than the OLS. If you go back to the table, do you remember that we don't find a significant difference for the 0 0.75 here? Why? Because it falls right here where they intersect and overlap with confidence intervals. But we had significant difference in the lower quantiles of 0.25 and 0.5. And that's important to note here. You see how like it's very easy to see graphically. And you're going to ask me, well, where is the significant difference from zero? And here is the zero. And look at how this one this line doesn't cross zero, therefore it's significantly different than zero. And this one actually also happens to be completely above zero, and therefore um, it's yeah, it's significantly different than zero. That's not the case <clears throat> right here. You see like how the confidence interval for the OLS includes the zero, so it's not significantly different than zero. And we have here that we're getting again not significantly different than zero. Uh, in the higher quantiles because we're we're kind of intersecting that that with zero. So again, a lot going on, but you want to have something like that uh, described when you when you do your own um, research. And again, uh, we we see exactly the same numbers. These are coming from um, from the table. One suggestion for you is if you can get the software to do these graphs for you. You can just do them in Excel or any other software. All you need is the coefficients from the quantile regression, and you need to get these pretty precisely, like every fifth quantile or every tenth quantile. And then plot the confidence intervals around them and plot the OLS and the, uh, the, the confidence interval, and you're ready to go. So um, so again, this is the most interesting variable, and these variables aren't as interesting. I mean, you have significant, uh, yeah, you see like how there is no significant difference across the quantiles for age and so on. So on the next slide, I have, uh, let's see, I have the Stata results, and they're very much uh, the same. A little bit of problems here with how the scale and the numbers showed up, but you can see exactly the same uh, conclusions. And um, finally, here are the points that I already went over when I was discussing the, um, the graphs, but you can pause and read them carefully and make sure that you use these kinds of descriptions when you write your own research paper. Thanks for watching, and next I'm going in to show you how to estimate these quantile regression models with different software.